Hi there my Ingo Pico friends! One of my lovely subscribers asked me if I could create a tutorial about a very handy shape builder tool in Affinity Designer version 2, so here it is! This tutorial is suitable for beginner and intermediate Affinity Designer users and by the end of this video you will know everything you need to know to be able to create your own projects with this tool. And after that I will speed up this video to show you how I got to create this Jira. I have a lot to explain to you so let's jump right into it! The shortcut for this tool is S and you can find it right here. Before you start working with the shape build tool, the layers you want to work with need to be selected. You can do this with the move tool. The shortcut for it is V. Now when you go back to the shape builder tool, there are four ways to select the shapes you want to work with. The first way of selecting them is by clicking on them. You know that your shape is selected when you see this blue line. When you want to deselect some of these shapes, you can just click on them again. The second method is the freehand drag method, when you click and drag over your shapes. Then when you want to deselect them, you can press shift, click and drag over them again. The third method is the line drag method. When you start selecting your shapes, you'll get this straight line which you can move up and down. And the fourth and last method is the marquee drag method. With this one you click and drag over your shapes and they will be selected. Now let's have a look at the actions. There are two ways of working with them. The first way is when you don't have any action pre-selected. You want to select your shapes with the move tool, then you bring up the shape builder tool by pressing S and you drag over your shapes, then you choose one of the actions, I'll go with plus, and you'll get your new shape. The second way is when you have one of the actions pre-selected. So I'll go with the plus action again. I'll select my shapes with the move tool, bring up the shape builder tool by pressing S. I'll drag over my shapes and when I let go, I'll automatically get my new shape. Now let's have a look at each of the action options. So what the plus does, it creates a new shape from selected areas and removes used areas from original objects. So when you have your action pre-selected, then you drag over your shapes and let go, you'll automatically get a new shape. Alternatively, when you have no action pre-selected, you can drag over your shapes and instead of clicking on the little plus here on the context toolbar, you can simply press plus on the keyboard. With the minus action, you can delete selected shape areas. So after you select your shape with the move tool, you bring up the shape builder tool, you can pre-select the minus and then click on the areas that you want to delete. Alternatively, you can press the minus button on the keyboard. And the third and last action creates a new shape from selected areas while keeping the original selected object. It will create a new layer for this new shape. Instead of clicking on the option on the context toolbar, you can also press asterisk on your keyboard. Let's have a look at what happens when you have some layer effects applied to some of your shapes. When you have the use style from first selected area activated and you want to add areas, meaning you would choose the plus option, the object style like fill or stroke color, layer effects and stroke properties of the first selected area you drag from will be carried over to the other area. So I have these two squares, one is orange and one is black. So I activate the use style from first selected area and when I start dragging, from the orange square, which is my first selected area, and I'll drag over to the black square, then I choose the plus option, both my squares will be orange. The same would happen if I had this outline and 3D effect applied to one of my squares. I would select both my squares, bring up the shape builder tool, I would start dragging from my first selected area, over to the black square, then I would choose the plus option and all my layer effects will be applied to my new shape. Dragging from outside the area will pick up the currently set default stroke or fill color instead. So let's say I have these two squares again and I have a yellow color set as my default fill color. When I select both shapes and start dragging from outside the area, my new shape will be yellow. You will get the same result when you deactivate the use style from first selected area. Cleanup options is when it starts to be a bit more difficult. Before I show you what these options do, I would like to explain three important words that I will be using. The first one is an open curve and it looks like this. It's a curve created by the pen or pencil tool. It is not closed as the name suggests. The second word is a shape. 
It typically refers to a closed geometric object such as a rectangle, ellipse, and so on. And the last one are areas. Those are parts or sections of your shapes that you're working with to create new shapes. So coming back to the cleanup options, these are options that automatically remove unwanted curves and shape areas when building your new shape. When the option internal curves is activated, it means that parts of open curves extending into areas will be removed. So these are my open curves, which are extending into the area I want to work with. When I drag over both layers with the Shape Builder tool and click on plus, I will get my square and open curves, which are now shorter. It's because the parts of the open curves, which were extending into the square, were cut off. Connected curves means that open curves extending over selected and or unselected areas will be removed. So these are my open curves again and watch what will happen when I drag over my selected area. All open curves were removed. The last option is all unused geometry. This means that shapes and open curves both inside and outside of the selected area will be removed. So let's say that I want my selected area or my new shape to be the square together with the circles. These are the open curves, these are the shapes inside of my selected area, and this bit of a star is the shape outside of my selected area. I select the area I want to create the new shape from, and I click on the plus option. The open curves, the parts where the circles and the square were intersecting, and the bit of the star were removed. Okay, now that you should have the basics of using the Shape Builder tool, you can have a look how I created this illustration using just a few tools that Affinity Designer offers. Some of the tools are shapes like ellipses and rectangles, the pen tool, the corner tool, and the Shape Builder tool, of course. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial so far. If you are always looking for new ways to make your life easier when using Affinity Designer, I have a few other videos which you can watch now. And if you are new to surface pattern design, you can check out my whole Affinity Designer workflow for surface pattern designs from inspiration to creation. As always, I love hearing from you guys, so don't be shy and let me know in the comments what you would like to learn more about. See you in the next video. Ciao!